Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our cybersecurity awareness webinar. My name is Anna Drupchuk. I am a marketing manager at Cyclum, and I'm joined with my colleagues today to discuss the role of cybersecurity in today's volatile world. Let me kindly introduce our speakers. So, Alexander Maidanyuk. Director of Quality Engineering, Global Solutions Leader at Cyclum, Master of Science, Applied Mathematics, experienced in establishing, scaling, and leading engineering teams, founder and community of communities and pro bono initiatives, speaker at a variety of events and conferences. Andri Lisuk, Head of Cybersecurity at Cyclum. Uh, Andri has more than 20 years experience in information security management, application security, network security, etc. And used to work as a security consultant in top global consultancies for years. Bogdan Srednitsky, a certified cybersecurity engineer at Cyclum. Bogdan has a deep expertise in web and mobile app security assessments, penetration testing, DevSecOps projects, and many others. So, uh, welcome, uh, excuse me, welcome. And before we start, uh, I encourage all of you to participate in discussion, uh, leaving your thoughts and questions in the comments. We will try to cover most of them in the end of the webinar. So today our webinar will cover the role of cybersecurity in modern world analytics at uh, uh, of the latest data of latest data breaches supply chain information security uh, risk management security program at the growth enabler vendor scoring uh, application secu security and finally uh, in the end of our discussion we will have 10 to 15 minutes uh, for the Q&A. So again, don't hesitate to ask your questions in the comments. Now, Andre, uh, a word to you. Uh, thank you, Anna. So first, uh, I would like to talk to you about the role of cybersecurity in modern world. We observe uh, a number of changes how business are operating now. We see an increase in online presence and hyperconnectivity between organizations a number of uh, online transactions is increasing and number of uh, e-commerce um, transactions and uh, selling of goods is also increasing. We observe efficiency of business operations boosting up uh, by artificial intelligence, machine learning algorithms. We see also automated business decisions made at scale. Also, uh, we see a lot of companies are uh, doing meshed operations with different partners where the capabilities are not present at the companies themselves. For example, different uh, payment systems, uh, video processing, chats, uh, and others. And uh, last but not least, uh, we've observed the shift to remote workforce caused by pandemic COVID, uh, which uh, increased the reliance on the infrastructure. So all these changes uh, required companies to adapt to new circumstances so do the villains they also adapt and uh, change their tactics uh, and strategies so we see a number of different uh, cybersecurity threats a lot of um, data leaks um, uh, destruction and breaches of data at large scale we see number of digital scheming attacks uh, personal identifiable information uh, is sold on the black markets uh, after being uh, disclosed. We see rise of ransomware attacks, which are targeting different organizations of different size. Uh, denial service uh, conditions on critical infrastructure, supply chain is attacked. What about targets? In fact, every organization irrespective of the size can be the target of cyber attack. An example of such statement uh, is WannaCry, uh, outbreak in 2017 when uh, every organization was um, uh, a victim um, almost every organization was a victim uh, irrespective of the size uh, however there are some preferences for cyber criminals uh, medium-sized businesses and e-commerce stores they are more frequent targets because of bigger controls 
and also a more easy way of monetizing uh, the data uh, that was uh, stolen from the companies. So online customers suffer from their data compromised. How to deal with all the threats and how to approach this problem? The best way is to establish solid and robust cybersecurity program. Uh, it uh, allows uh, to achieve certain benefits. First of all, it allows to help managing technology risks appropriately by reducing probability and potential impact. Also, this uh, can allow companies to prove uh, reliability for the customers to make sure that their data is in the trustful hands and also even enter new markets not accessible before. Uh, how to build this cybersecurity program? The best way is to uh, learn from the past, to analyze uh, latest data breaches and incidents, to see where the application of uh, efforts is the most efficient. Uh, when we are doing analytics of latest data breaches, um, we can uh, utilize different sources. Of course, we can use uh, public information. Um, for example, you can go to the Wikipedia page uh, with the list uh, of uh, recent data breaches with the references to data sources. Uh, and uh, they are classified uh, by the size, by the type, uh, attack vector involved, uh, which malicious sectors uh, were, uh, were acting also the root cause for the attack and the impact. Uh, these analytics can give uh, understanding of the li likelihood and uh, magnitude of the potential attacks. And uh, of course, I also just encourage you to uh, look at different analytical uh, data sources like reports prepared by organizations uh, dealing with uh, incidents, helping uh, companies to investigate and to mitigate them. Uh, one example is data breach investigation report uh, yearly prepared by Verizon. And for this year, uh, there are key takeaways that can be obtained from that report. First of all, let's uh, look at the attack vectors. 45% uh, of data breaches involved hacking. It means that uh, um, compromised software was associated with such data breaches. Also, you can see uh, quite a lot of uh, data breaches associated with human errors or social engineering attacks. Uh, it means uh, that a lot of attention should be paid uh, to cybersecurity awareness campaigns, which can be started, for example, from our webinar. And 43% of data breaches were associated with web applications, which also elevates the importance of web application uh, security program, how to test them, uh, how to identify vulnerabilities and how to mitigate. And later in our webinar, uh, you will see a couple of examples how such activities can be performed. Um, also, we can look at the malicious actors where 55% of data breaches were made by organized criminal groups, which uh, makes uh, sense um, that because uh, now uh, criminal activities are being uh, organized and uh, it's not just individual hackers who are going after the data of the companies. Uh, there are different chains. Um, first data is stolen, then it is monetized, uh, sold, and etc. 70% of successful attacks initiated by external actors. Uh, however, uh, they can appeal to internal actors uh, by utilizing social engineering. Vector, uh, let's refer back uh, to the statement about the data breaches include social engineering. And financial motivated breaches are more common than espionage. So let's go through uh, several examples of latest data breaches. First one, Clearview AI in, in 2020. Uh, that is the company uh, implemented uh, facial recognition software utilizing artificial intelligence. Um, it took information from different social networks uh, and uh, that information was used by law enforcement organizations like police department in Toronto, Atlanta, Florida. Uh, during that data breach, three billions of records were lost and uh, which sparked privacy concern about the reliability of uh, such organizations. Another example is Instagram data breach this year uh, that was uh, caused uh, by the vulnerability in uh, 
uh, hosting of Deep Social uh, systems. Deep Social is currently a defunct company that was took over by social data. After security researcher notified the CTO of social data, he acknowledged the exposure and demanded to shut down the, the servers uh, hosting uh, that vulnerable database. However, uh, that uh, time was enough for the information to be leaked. And third example is Marriott Hotel chain. Uh, in 2020, five uh, million records were lost. Uh, some personal details, contact information, preferences, that wasn't the first uh, data breach for search hotel chain. Uh, there is a link here to the official press release. Uh, so this hotel chain officially communicated to the customers about it. And uh, that is an example uh, proving that it's uh, important to be prepared for potential security breaches and collect evidences, information and investigate root cause. And now I would like to touch upon mage card attacks, uh, uh, which are worth attention for a couple of reasons. In fact, uh, there is a series of attacks uh, performed uh, by organized criminal groups. Uh, card digital scheming, uh, which includes uh, collection of uh, card data at the checkout page of online stores, and then validation of this data in uh, different online stores and performing fraudulent transactions. Uh, that is an evolution of uh, classical uh, card uh, scheme and attack where some devices are attached to ATM and are used uh, to copy a magnetic stripe with all the data. Uh, online digital scheming is uh, more dangerous because more information is taken, not only data from the mag magnetic strip, but also personal data like uh, postal address uh, and date of birth probably. Uh, so root cause is the wide usage of third party components in different e-commerce uh, platforms, a rapid time to market without proper verification and usage of components with known vulnerabilities. Uh, the impact of such attacks uh, was for different organizations and the latest high profile victim was British Airways in 2018. Uh, which resulted uh, in loss of uh, reputation, some loss of reputation, penalties and fines related to GDPR. And also, um, of course, a lot of efforts for remediation and customer disputes resolution. When supply chain is involved uh, in uh, providing software or services, uh, security risk associated with supply chain should be evaluated. Nowadays, supply chain are quite uh, popular and diversified. They allow a more rapid uh, time to market delivery of value, uh, access to different expertise not available to the company. Uh, software vendors, uh, software solution providers are providing services to the business. And there are certain attributes associated with supply chain like integrity, quality, resilience and uh, security. Uh, as you can see on this diagram, service is flowing from the provider to the client. However, which is important, in the opposite direction, there should be a flow of demands and requirements, including security requirements. Before going into this relationship with uh, supply um, chain providers, a risk of supply chain compromise should be evaluated, which can be intentional or unintentional. Unintentional can be attributed to human errors, Let's come back to data breach investigation report and 22% of data breaches caused by human factor. Um, as a result, uh, there are certain uh, cybersecurity threats uh, which can be malware and hardware. Uh, recent examples were um, by software and laptops uh, contained malware. Malware and software uh, and modules like vulnerabilities in um, OpenSSL um, also vulnerabilities in software and applications. Uh, one example is Medoc uh, uh, in Ukraine, uh, which was used for statutory reporting and contained vulnerability that was later uh, used uh, by external uh, threat agents. And uh, last but not least, issues with licenses. A couple of years ago, there was a problem with jQuery module, uh, widely used uh, by software developers. Uh, one company, commercial company, claimed that they own a patent uh, for the technology in this jQuery. And a lot of uh, companies uh, suddenly 
appeared in a situation where they have to make a tough decision what to do next, either to get rid of jQuery in all the software, which is not so easy, or prepare amount of money to pay for the license. And the mitigation for that is uh, to perform security due diligence, including vulnerability scanning for all third party components in the solutions. Security program could also be considered as growth enabler, and now we will discuss why. Many companies are trying to target large clients, not only small ones, uh, because large clients allows uh, to grow uh, for the providers themselves. However, there are challenges for such uh, pursuits uh, for SMB, small and medium businesses, and because from the large clients, often there are RFP with security questionnaires. Uh, they are demanding some contract clauses related to security demands for certifications like ISO 27001. Um, such uh, uh, demand can uh, reduce the risk uh, causing downtime and improve productivity. There are a lot of positive benefits. However, there is a quite difficult road to go and to achieve this certification and status. So um, large clients, they are taking their requirements from different sources, like industry regulations, financial regulations, data privacy regulations. And of course, their customers are demanding certain security requirements. And they um, prepare all these in internal policies and put this into RFP for the service. And only the companies uh, that are well positioned to answer all these security related questions, they have high chances to win the contract. Um, um, so security uh, can be considered as a growth enabler. There was an old uh, perception, old paradigm that information security is a cost of doing business. And the new paradigm is that uh, information security can enable growth, market success, innovations, and efficiency. A quote from the Innovation Accelerator report prepared by Vodafone states that 90% of organizations' leaders consider that cybersecurity enhances reputation on the market and helps with attracting new clients. One example uh, how good attitude to security can uh, strengthen market position is the incident with Cloudflare. So, in fact, it was incident in 2017, uh, data breach due to the vulnerability in the software uh, resulted in a lot of uh, customers being affected. However, the way how Cloudflare reacted to this, how they investigated and mitigated uh, and how they um, put this into the isolated box, um, so how they uh, limit the spread, spread of impact um, was resulted in even stronger brand. And in our practice uh, at Cyclone, we also observe a uh, number of companies. One good example is the company, fast growing startup uh, that um, um, planned uh, to target uh, large organizations, large companies. And after they received a lot of uh, questionnaires related to security, they put a certification for ISO 27001 on their roadmap. So uh, the driver was uh, not uh, how to deal with uh, security issues, but more a uh, driver from the market uh, to win uh, market competition on the market. Uh, vendor scoring is used uh, by um, clients uh, to evaluate vendors by different uh, categories and criteria like financial position, long-term viability, ethical way of doing business, uh, information security practices. So no one wants to be in the newspapers covering security incidents. That's why uh, care should be taken uh, when vendor is selected. Example of negative impact from the vendor on the client is the data breach uh, at T-Mobile this year uh, that was caused by email vendor, which provided services to T-Mobile. A couple of organizations that can be um, named among such uh, agencies are uh, BitSight, which provides rating for cybersecurity uh, by evaluating information from public sources and from the perimeter by scanning perimeter for organizations. 
And also for business reputation, um, an agency operating on the North American market, the uh, BBB, can be named. Uh, there are certain categories for reliability, starting from A plus uh, ending by F. And uh, it relates to building trust, uh, telling the truth, uh, transparent advertisement, and so on. Um, so the principle that should be used during uh, the building of cybersecurity program is the following. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's better to be prepared uh, to validate, uh, to check for vulnerabilities uh, than to deal later with cybersecurity incidents. And um, a helpful thing in building cybersecurity uh, program is a uh, number of different frameworks, international frameworks and regulations that can provide a hint uh, which requirements can be, um, how to secure applications. So data privacy regulations like GDPR in Europe or CCPA in California can be used uh, also regulations from payment industries like PCI DSS and regional regulations. NIST in US, IT Security Act in Germany and Security Essentials or Security Essentials Plus in UK. And now um, I would like to ask Bogdan uh, to discuss with you to present uh, what can be the steps uh, for implementing application security program. Thank you, Andrei. Hello, everyone. Uh, as you can saw from Andre's talk, applications are really spread nowadays and their security is already a hot topic, so let's dive into the practical part. It will be easier to understand the types of the vulnerabilities if we take a look at a typical application architecture. Each component can have its vulnerabilities, including traffic between those components and third parties that application can use. The impact of the application attacks can affect either one of the main pillars of security, its confidentiality, integrity, and availability, or even all of them at once. And I would like to point a few important security testing principles. Companies often try to find simple solutions for application security by using only automated scanners. But actually, there is no silver bullet as scanners can cover less than 50% of possible vulnerabilities. So approach to application security should be complex. It's easier and cheaper for company to implement security on early stages of development and include it to the development lifecycle. Security testing is more efficient if security specialists dive into details when they think like an attacker think, when they think out of the box, and when they try to understand the application business logic. Now let's move to practical part and review popular web application attacks. According to WASP top 10 web application security risks, injection is on the first place, and one of the injection attack types is a skill injection. Let's see how it works. Typically, an attacker can add a SQL query to valid request, and application will execute this malicious query as valid one. And uh, as we see in our case, the database will return a SQL server version to the attacker. Now let's see practical example of a SQL injection attack. Actually, we have prepared pre-recorded demo to avoid any technical problems and to save your time. In this demo, I will show you practical exploitation of a SQL injection attack. I will use a last juice shop application that has lots of vulnerabilities and can be legally used for learning purposes. In the first scenario, we'll try to bypass login check. To do this, we have to enter part of a SQL query as an email. This statement will modify initial SQL query to be always true and application will let us in. As a password, we can submit any text. As a result, we are logged in and we have an access to the administrator account. In 
the second scenario, we will try to obtain users' data from the database even without being logged in. To speed up, I will miss the reconnaissance part and will go directly to the attack. We have found a search request that can return us items in the shop. And if we will add special character that is used for basic SQL injection test, we will see that error that has information about database. We can see that it is SQLite database and such application behavior tells us that application is vulnerable to SQL injection. In our case, we will use SQL injection union attack. It means that we will add another SQL query to the existing one to be able to retrieve the results from an injected query. This type of attack requires to identify the number of columns first to make a valid request, and then we can start obtaining the data from the database. Let's see how it works. With this request, we will obtain an SQLite version, and as a result of this attack, we see that the version is 3311. Let's get the names of the tables that are present in current database. How to use this request? It will show us all available table names from system table SQLite master. And here we have the results. We can see different tables and there is table users that can potentially have sensitive information about available users. So let's get information about columns that are present in it. To do this, we can use request with pragma function that will return all the columns of the named table. Now we see that there is email column. Let's go next. And we see the password column name. They might be interesting for us. Let's obtain information from them. In the request, we are selecting email and password fields from users table. And we have successfully retrieved information with users' emails and password hashes. Let's, for example, take an admin password hash and try to crack it. For this purpose, we will use free password hash cracker, crack station, crack hashes. And now we see that the result is admin123. So let's log into the application using admin's email. password that we have found. And now we see that we have administrator session successfully obtained. These attacks were done manually, but actually they could be executed using, for example, SQL map tool. As the main mitigation for SQL injection, uh, the parameterized queries are recommended to be used. Parameterized queries ensure that attacker is not able to change the intent of a query, even if SQL comments are inserted by an attacker. But they can be used to handle untrusted input in other parts of the query, such as table or column names or the order by clause. Another popular attack is cross-site scripting. One of typical attack scenarios looks like this. Attacker sends malicious script to the application and it stores it, for example, in a comments page. And this page is available by other users. And when a user visits the page with comments from an attacker, malicious script executes and sends session cookies to the attacker. Let's see the demo, how it could be done in practice. 
In this demo, we will see how it is possible to exploit cross-site scripting attack. We will use Wasp Juice Shop vulnerable application for this purpose. We are logged in under registered user account and in a Warp suit application that works as a proxy and has a number of other models for security testing, we have found that we can update the description of the product. We can change the description parameter here. And in response, we can see that it was successfully updated. Now let's put an as a description XSS payload. This payload will add a frame to the page with an image. And at the source of an image, we are pointing an attacker's machine IP address and we are adding document cookie parameter. This script will execute HTTP request to an attacker's machine and will add session cookie of the user who opened this page with a malicious script. To be able to receive this request, attacker has to have a listener running. We will use Python for this goal and will run a local server on port 88. Let's go to the victim's account and open product with modified description. We see that we are under administrator account and here is the item with modified description. And let's go back to the attacker's machine. Now we can see request from victim's machine with session cookies parameters appended. Let's copy it and look what's inside. Having this information, we can modify our user's session by changing token parameter to the victim's one. To do this, we will go to the web application and open developer tools and change cookies parameter. Now we have to refresh web page. And now we can see that we are under administrator session. Main recommendations on XSS preventions are to filter input data, to encode an output to prevent it from being interpreted as active content. Use appropriate response header such as content type or X content type options to ensure that browsers interpret the response in the way you intend. Use content security policy to reduce the severity of any XSS vulnerabilities that still occur. And additionally, I would like to share with you some useful links that developers, testers, and administrators may use as uh, guidelines to make their applications more secure. And now I would like to pass the word to Alexander. With Andre the different security vulnerabilities and strategies from a business point of view and Bogdan uh, showed the practical examples as you asked and uh, right now I will be shortly sharing our Seacom experience and uh, how we are dealing with implementing cybersecurity programs shortly and then we will be switching to the Q&A session. So first of all um, I would like to point your attention to the our framework where we implemented based on our SQL experience and based on the various of the international frameworks. Uh, we have defined the framework uh, with a step-by-step -step guide uh, for the implementation of different cybersecurity program. As you might see, it's really applicable for uh, small companies that are starting your cybersecurity journey, mid-size companies. During the journey, you need to upskill your personnel or implement the proper cybersecurity metrics or change or adapt your cybersecurity strategy based on the technology or business changes. Or you might need to receive the real-time results 
of embedding of cybersecurity into CI/CD pipelines, implementing DevSecOps practices, and upskilling the team, uh, having uh, enough or comprehensive knowledge on the security area. So uh, we are doing this through, uh, through the discovery phases where we are together uh, with the partner or company defining uh, assessing current level, then going through the strategy and advisory phases, understanding business and technical goals and desired state. Plus, together we are doing the POC plus implementation of required practices from processes or technical point of view or upskilling the teams or embedding the proper uh, controls uh, uh, or uh, embedding the metrics on the, uh, through the proper CICD and the SDLC cycles. The services, it's uh, really useful for any stages of the journey we are providing from the application security, uh, dynamic static security analysis, basically designed to support SDLC process and embed cybersecurity into that. A VIA professional doing the penetration testing for the web mobile IoT infrastructure uh, types. We are designing a security operation center uh, to provide and prevent uh, the protection of the systems and networks. Uh, we do specialize in security services with the GDPR, HIPAA, ISO, and the PC, PCI DSS audits. It might help uh, you and your teams to be more compliant and deliver the proper assessment and guidance with the mitigation strategies. We are able to uh, set up for you their security team, uh, focusing on the different stages and different substreams on your security programs. And we are providing security education and training based on the various standards and guidelines. If uh, for, uh, for companies that started the journey or on the middle maturity level, we are providing advanced techniques, how we embedding and managing cybersecurity into uh, agile and DevOps environments. You might see on the screen shortly that uh, we, we are helping to uh, proper managing the security database, uh, organizing the re reporting mechanism for technical product and management teams. We know how to integrate cybersecurity into the CI/CD tools uh, from all popular uh, providers. Infrastructure support embed SecOps and build a proper process of managing the incidents uh, from their uh, beginning to the full scale and implementation. We are operating in the modern infrastructures and orchestration of the environments, and uh, you might find useful our uh, blog posts and articles around how we manage uh, and implement security programs on the various environments, like from AWS to Google Cloud uh, to OpenStack and Redshift. And, uh, oh, to point your attention that uh, always discuss with your partner or potential vendors the uh, security governance, security certifications that the vendor holds, plus methodologies that, that they're using. We specifically at Cyclum uh, focusing on, on the four popular methodologies from OWASP to penetration testing frameworks and having both individuals and company governance and certifications that are helping our personnel uh, our teams be more upskilled and deliver the valuable results for our customers. And right now, let's invite to Anna to do some small announcement and uh, move into the Q&A. Thank Anna. Yeah, thank you, colleagues. Uh, thank you, everyone. I hope this 45 minutes will, were really helpful for you. Uh, I'm, uh, I would like to quickly announce our next uh, event, uh, that uh, next session uh, that is going to be conducted on November 20th. Uh, we will be happy to see you next time uh, on a techniques used by penetration teams session. So stay tuned um, uh, and uh, follow uh, Cyclone page uh, for more details regarding this session. And uh, now we are ready for the Q&A. Uh, uh, we got a lot of 
quite a quite a bit of questions uh, during the webinar and uh, we still have some time to uh, answer some of them so uh, the first question from the audience uh, again if you still have some questions feel free to ask them in the comments se section under this uh, live stream uh, and we will try to answer as much as we can uh, so the first one uh, when is it when is it appropriate to use the insurance just a second i will get our colleagues back yeah, go ahead. Okay, so, uh, Anna, maybe uh, I will take uh, this question. Uh, uh, probably the question was about uh, cyber insurance, which is quite popular method, uh, how to deal with uh, cybersecurity risks. Uh, as you know, there are different ways how to deal with the risk. Uh, it's possible uh, to mitigate the risk, to apply some countermeasure, uh, to avoid the risk, um, just not to use application that is vulnerable. Uh, to uh, accept the risk, uh, to accept the consequences. And uh, one of the options is to transfer the risk. So it means that uh, another organization or company is bearing that risk uh, for some payment. Uh, such kind of organization is a uh, cyber um, insurance company. Uh, there are a lot of such companies operating on, on different markets. Uh, uh, usually for um, cyber assurance uh, are those risks that have uh, low probability or extremely low probability and high or extremely high impact. Uh, that is the same as for uh, normal insurance. For example, you buy insurance policy to protect your uh, apartment or, or house from, from destruction uh, or from other disaster um, conditions, uh, it's uh, not worth uh, to build uh, some uh, construction to, to protect it by yourself because you will pay a lot of money for that and probability is quite low. Uh, what is done at the um, cyber insurance companies, they are aggregating the risks. So they are taking policy from many organizations and uh, they are measuring probability that, uh, that uh, a risk will re be realized. So, however, there is some caveat um, in buying cybersecurity policy. Uh, the price for that policy is uh, dependent uh, on the level of uh, cybersecurity practices in your organizations. Usually, they are asking you to demonstrate cybersecurity certificate uh, or they are doing their independent audit. Um, so, the complex solution should be in place. Uh, some small uh, risks uh, should be mitigated by the company itself, for example, implementing uh, proper password policy, checking for vulnerabilities. However, for large disasters, cyber insurance policy is a good candidate. Cool. Thank you, Andrei. Uh, another question from the same person. Uh, how to digitize industrial cyber risks? Uh, there are two approaches to deal with uh, risks. Uh, one is uh, qualitative and another is uh, quantitative. For quantity, we need uh, to establish certain value uh, figure and then compare one risk to another. Uh, that value is usually consistent from the probability and the impact. The impact uh, can be more or less uh, identified precisely, but it's, uh, it's difficult to do it. Uh, however, as for the probability, usually the question how probable that uh, incident can be is quite, quite difficult to answer. And again, uh, we can uh, refer back uh, to the cyber insurance companies. They are collecting a lot of data and they are professional in managing risks, managing uh, natural risks. Uh, uh, so they are collecting these tables uh, from the past I know once I had an experience with a large uh, insurance company and the most critical asset for that company was the list of records for the past incidents for um, tens of years. And they kept that uh, in offsite storage uh, because that can be used to predict the future. So we use the past to predict the future. We need a large volume of such data. That's why um, one organization can't... Uh, uh, properly uh, evaluate, uh, quantify that. 
it's better to, to deal with uh, such professional organizations. Great, thank you very much. Uh, another question is related to the uh, source of the statistics we referred to in our session. Can we uh, recommend any uh, sources for the audience uh, uh, to, to, to read up some statistics? Uh, during the preparation for this webinar, we uh, took information from different sources, but the main um, source uh, with uh, quite good uh, analytics is this uh, data breach investigation report uh, that can be uh, obtained uh, easily from, from Verizon. Uh, and Verizon is, as I mentioned, uh, it's better to refer to professionals uh, for different matters. So Verizon, they are doing a lot of, of forensic and they uh, analyze a lot of incidents. That's why uh, they can provide such statistics about the size of company, uh, the industry. Um, um, also, uh, there is another uh, good uh, uh, source of data about the cost. Uh, Ponemon Institute uh, is preparing analytics for the cost of data breach. In that case, you can even see what is uh, approximate uh, amount of money that company is going to pay or is uh, pushed to pay in case of uh, security incident. Uh, so a data breach investigation report is quite, quite valuable uh, in case you want to compare yourself with other organizations to see and uh, to identify what uh, is the risky area for you. Great. Uh, another, another one. Uh, what happens if we simply put IPS between our site and the world in case you don't have professional staff to mitigate uh, on application level? Okay, I, I will take also uh, this one. So IPS stands for intrusion protection system, which is an evolution of intrusion detection system, which uses uh, certain signatures analyzes traffic between two components, in our case, uh, client and web application. And when certain uh, rule is triggered, uh, there is a certain pattern, which is similar to attack pattern. Um, uh, the source of attack can be blocked, the IP address uh, can be added to blacklist, or uh, maybe certain commands uh, or strings uh, can be removed from the the flow. Um, for web application, uh, for web applications, uh, IPS uh, type is usually implemented in web application firewalls. That is the next generation firewalls that are aware about how uh, data is processed by web applications. They are uh, looking for different vulnerabilities from a WASP top 10, for example, and they can uh, provide automated uh, protection. However, as with any automated solution, there are a number of problems like false positives or false negatives. Uh, false positives uh, means that uh, this solution uh, treats something uh, as an attack, which in fact is not an attack. And false negatives uh, means that we are relying on the um, solution to protect us from the attack. However, the attack is going through. Uh, for the first time, um, in my practice, I've seen examples uh, when uh, some vendors of application firewalls, uh, uh, some models like F5, they are not compatible with uh, certain uh, libraries used by web applications and uh, legitimate users are blocked. Uh, usually the um, approach for implementing uh, them are the following, the company is first implementing them, uh, starting to activate the rules, then they see a number of complaints from users, uh, they are deactivating it completely, and then uh, after several waves, they are um, tuning that. So each uh, solution, each automated solution, it requires quite a lot of tuning in order to um, adapt to the way how applications are operated in that environment. Uh, and for the false positives, uh, that also not good experience with them because uh, false positives means uh, company is considering they are protected by they are not protected. In fact, it's a, a false sense of security. 
which is quite dangerous. And what happens if we use PAM solutions? Uh, PAM solution uh, can help with um, account management uh, at the operating system uh, to um, implement different rules, uh, for example, enforce uh, password policy, and etc. But these uh, solutions are working at the operating system level um, and applications they are using for authentication uh, different mechanisms. Um, sometimes uh, it is the database of accounts in the database management system, sometimes some SSO um, integration with uh, identity providers are organized. Uh, so uh, the bottom line for all this is that uh, it's necessary to do comprehensive analysis of the um, application, ecosystem, uh, components uh, that are there, and uh, see if some combinations or integration uh, of different components, they can uh, add new vulnerabilities and new weaknesses. Um, one, one good uh, article that I can recommend uh, you to read uh, to get a sense of what can happen when uh, two seemingly secure systems are grouped together and they create a vulnerability. That article uh, was written by uh, editor of Wired Journal and uh, the title, if I remember correctly, was uh, how um, Apple and Amazon uh, flaws or vulnerabilities led to, uh, to the disaster, to, to epic uh, fail. That person suffered from certain attack on that person. Uh, which uh, was possible due to the um, possibility to use some information provided by Amazon to, to, to take over the account uh, in iCloud and completely erase uh, all the digital presence on different devices. That, that is quite a good article to understand uh, uh, how complex the problem of information security in complex system can be. Uh, so, our advice uh, is to have proper threat modeling, analysis of the architecture, uh, um, analysis of application itself, and of course, infrastructure. Um, some infrastructure penetration testing is also recommended. Thank you very much, Andre. So we have the final question for now. We still have a few minutes if, uh, in case if anyone from the audience still have one. So go ahead and ask it uh, in the comments section. Uh, so meanwhile, the final one at this point, um, after hashing the data from a, a web service to a web application and vice versa, is it secured or uh, there are other risks to be taken into account? Like, let me take this question. Uh, actually, uh, to answer properly for this question, it uh, requires some more details, uh, but uh, general recommendations and what to stress on is uh, that uh, great thing is uh, on what this question depends, on what the security depends is the hash algorithm that is or that are used uh, in this solution and how actually this uh, is Im implemented as um, there are really uh, strong and there are weak algorithms for hashing and uh, from our side we recommend to use the uh, strongest algorithms that are supported by the system and that are available. Uh, again, um, if we talk the, uh, about the algorithm, algorithms that could be supported by the system, we have to uh, take into the account other vectors, uh, attack vectors that could be uh, arise if we use some uh, less strong algorithms. Uh, also, we recommend a general recommendation for uh, hashing is to use salt and uh, and to um, always look after what is going on with those algorithms as they 
uh, from time to time they could be uh, updated or there there, um, there could be some uh, actually a text uh, completed on uh, all the algorithms and uh, I'm not sure if uh, this uh, webinar is public uh, that uh, uh, sometime ago Andre has uh, talked to about the cryptography and uh, I will recommend this uh, um, presentation to everyone who wants to have some information about cryptography and fashion. Uh, uh, Bogdan, that webinar was uh, for the internal use only, however, uh, that is a good idea to prepare something similar for a wider audience. Uh, and um, I think we will take this idea. And we can share it as a link afterwards. So yeah, it's a good idea to share it with the audience. Okay, thank you, Bogdan. Uh, I see we have another question uh, from the audience. Uh, so if the company experiences cyber attacks from, from time to time, does it make sense to inform some sort of government agency or is it up to companies to deal with this kind of threats? Uh, I feel like companies don't like to announce that they had a hack I don't see how police or some other agency can help either, especially when the attackers can be anywhere. So I will take this question. Uh, as I mentioned in our webinar, um, currently we see uh, that a lot, a lot of attacks uh, are uh, becoming uh, attacks uh, organized by criminal groups. Uh, so it's not the individual attacker or hacker uh, who is doing such things. Uh, it's more like uh, organized crime, uh, financially motivated, and uh, quite. Um, it's quite uh, probable that uh, that attack is happening for the neighboring organizations as well. So it's good to coordinate efforts uh, in order to to minimize the damage. Uh, many companies, large companies, they implemented threat intelligence uh, function their cybersecurity that is uh, looking for different attacks uh, uh, they are taking uh, information from from public sources or uh, some communities uh, indicators of compromise and they are checking if internally they have been uh, hacked uh, before or currently and also some regulations they require to disclose such information that uh, there was a data breach, uh, for example, GDPR, if uh, data breach was related to personally identifiable information, a uh, company has to announce it uh, and has to notify all affected parties. Thank you very much for your answer. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, we are out of time now. Uh, thank you for your time and interest. It was a very interesting uh, presentation a session for us. Um, if you have any questions to our speakers, you can reach out to us at cyclum uh, at cyclum uh, at cyclum.com or visit our website uh, cyclum.com. Uh, thank you again and see you soon.